It's always exciting coming to a new car launch, especially when it's a car that you've been waiting for and maybe even considering purchasing. This is the all new Volkswagen e-Golf. This is a fully electric vehicle. And what makes it even better test driving this? We're in Spain, Mallorca, Spain. One thing that may appeal to some buyers and not so much for others is the look for this EV. You see, the e-Golf looks pretty well like a regular Golf. It gets all the new upgrades of the newly revised Mark 7 Golf, which includes a new front and rear end. The e-Golf also comes standard with adaptive LED headlights and the rear also sports new LED taillights. For some, it may be hard to tell that you're driving an electric car. The only things that signify that you are driving an e-Golf, of course, the subtle e-Golf badging, different wheels, signature C-shaped LEDs on a lower valance, and of course, there's no tailpipe. I personally know quite a few people that like the idea of driving an EV, and they don't like the sometimes unique look associated with them, and I think I'm with them as well. The new Golf is a smart looking car, so why mess with it? This way, you get the best of both worlds. Just like the outside of the e-Golf, the inside, it doesn't differ much than the gas cousin. The e-Golf and the Golf R really are the premier Golfs and it really shows, it really has a very high-end look and feel. As for space and convenience, you really don't lose out on anything on the e-Golf compared to the regular Golf. Uh, you do have like a tunnel area where the battery is, so there's a hump in the middle. Most of the time, people don't sit back there anyways. And, uh, and then in the back for the cargo area, we can fit two suitcases. You lose out on a little bit of space in the height. The width is the same as the regular Golf. And if you want more room, you can fold the seats down as well. Up front, you have a beautiful new display. Standard is an eight inch display and optional is a 9.2 inch that we have here. It's a beautiful interface. It has gesture control normally found in real high end luxury vehicles. And then in the center, you have a digital dash, which is an option as well. I really like that dash because it gives you all the information because for electric cars, you have a lot more information that you can look at or uh, interact with. But one thing that this doesn't have, and I'm a little bit disappointed though, there's no volume knob on this screen. You have a touch screen for volume and you have it on the steering wheel, but no actual knob. The eight inch screen does have a knob. One more thing to note is navigation does not come standard on the eight inch screen, but it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Normally that's all you need. E-Golf is new for Canada, but it's not really a new car. It's been out in Europe and in certain markets in the United States. But for Canada, we get the latest generation E-Golf, which is this one, which is more efficient. It now has a 35.8 kilowatt hour battery, and that's uh, about 11 kilowatts up from the previous one. And that all fits in the same size package for the battery. We said that it was like an H style battery. And they do that with newer battery technology. Now the one thing about the batteries, for sure, you can feel the weight of this e-Golf. It, it doesn't feel as, as light as a regular Golf, but uh, all that weight is very low, so it helps with the center of gravity, keeps it nice and low, so it handles quite well, but it feels very solid. And that's really important. It's solid, there's no creaks, which is great because you hear everything. It's totally silent when you're driving this car. So kind of under the hood or under the car is the electric motor. It's a 100 kilowatt motor putting out 136 horsepower. And of course the torque, it's about 215 uh, pound feet of torque. And of course electric car, you put it, your foot down into it, you get instant torque right from zero. Charging times for the e-Golf vary by your method. You can plug it into a standard household outlet but it's gonna take you about 26 hours if it's totally dead. A level two 240 charger, whether in your house or at a charging station, will take about four to five hours. And also included is a DC quick charger connection, which can charge your e-Golf to 80% in as quick as 30 minutes. Everything is about efficiency and range in an electric car. So the range of this e-Golf in Europe is 300 kilometers with the European drive cycle. You're not gonna get 300 kilometers 
It's about 200 kilometers and they get that figure by averaging uh, a whole year of driving. The proper EPA number is 201 kilometers. We started with about 275 kilometers. And depending on their driving style, I think that 200 kilometer or 201 is actually attainable, depending on how you drive. We haven't been really nice to it. I've taken it on the freeway, dead 140, even 150 kilometers an hour, stop and go traffic. If you want to be more efficient, you have regenerative braking and you can set different levels just by going one, two, or three, and that's going to control how aggressive that braking is. If you want to coast a lot more, you just take it right out of that mode completely. One thing these European spec cars that we're driving that I really want in North America, the dynamic headlights. Yes, we do get the adaptive LEDs, which provide great bright light that turn with the car, but these dynamic ones actually block portions of the light allowing you to basically run on high beams all the time without blinding either oncoming traffic or cars in front of you. It's really, really wild and we really need it. A few more things to make this e-golf more efficient. You have standard a heated windshield and by the way you can pre-condition this vehicle when it's plugged in uh, into a grid so you can put the heat on if it's cold out or put the air conditioning on when it's hot out and you can control that get into your car it's ready to go and exclusive to canada this e-golf comes with a heat pump which makes it even more efficient for heating so how does this compare with its closest competitors it actually fits in quite well. Take for example, it has a larger motor, larger battery, and longer range, and pretty well the same price as the world's best-selling EV, the Nissan LEAF. Then you have the brand new Chevrolet Bolt, which does have a longer range, a larger battery, and it's quicker. The e-Golf makes a run to 100 kilometers in 9.6 seconds, while the Bolt does it in just 6.5. Here's where it gets interesting, the price. The Bolt starts at just under 43000 the Leaf starts at just under 34000 and the E-Golf starts at just under 36000 For that, you get a very, very well-equipped car. Available options would be the technology package, which gives you that 9.2-inch screen with gesture control, different interior illumination, and park distance control, and that's for $2,305 more. And then there's the driver assistance package, also for $2,305, which includes that digital dash, or cockpit as they call it, a host of advanced features like adaptive cruise with stop and go, blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert, emergency braking, and park assist, just to name a few. Depending where you live, you may also qualify for some serious rebates. Take for example, you can get up to $14,000 in rebates in Ontario. $8,500 in Quebec, and $5,000 in British Columbia. With those types of numbers, it could easily bring your e-golf down to the price of a regular gasoline golf. Plus, you'll be saving all that money on fuel. As I said earlier, I've been considering buying an electric car, and this e-golf, after driving it, it's really at the top of the list. It has everything that I need. It has the range. It actually, the range is even better than I expected. It's a real premium feeling product and I like the looks of it. It doesn't look like an electric car. And this is the latest and greatest in technology and I love technology. And the best thing, I live in one of those markets where I can get one of the rebates. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up and if you wanna see more everyday reviews, hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.